Dr. Timothy Ruck is a firm believer that doctors need to work in unison with their patients. And remember, keep the stress level down. That really is the best medicine there is for high blood pressure. Thanks, Doc. I appreciate it. Bet's on how long till we see him again? I'm tired of taking your money. So suddenly this guy comes in, and he's in an excruciating amount of pain. What happened? He was sparring with a judo partner. I think he dislocated his hip. Hip dislocations are pretty high on the pain scale. They're not quite childbirth, but they're not quite a kidney stone either. All right, let's get him to obey. On my count, one, two, three. Oh, God. Please, this is killing me. I need something for the pain. Pipe down. He's staring the other patients. I'll get you something as soon as they can. Mm. The firefighter who brought him in did not seem to be as empathetic as one might expect. But he wasn't my concern right now. Morphine, four milligrams, and on Dancitron, four milligrams, both IV push. It will help a little bit with the pain. About time. Mind your manners. I thought that when the dust settled, I would probably have to take this firefighter aside and talk to him about the manner in which he had addressed the patient. He had an artificial hip replacement last month. But then it became clear to me that they were partners. He's a little young for that. He's an exercise fanatic. Wore out his real hip because he wasn't listening to his doctor, and now he's doing the same thing with this one. Ow! Wait, tell me the name of his orthopedic surgeon. Dr. Kippen, right here in this hospital. Dr. Kippen. He's not just old school, he's prehistoric. In fact, he's been known to rain hellfire down on anyone who comes anywhere near one of his patients. Trevor's got the highest pain tolerance of anyone I know. It's got to be really bad. You need to do the reduction right now. A reduction is a medical term used to describe returning a bone back into its joint. Let's get a stat portable x-ray and we'll see where this hip is. It's pretty clear to me that he's dislocated his hip. But I need to confirm that with an x-ray. It's a posterior dislocation. It's completely out of socket. Wow. Since I've done quite a few joint reductions in my career, the x-ray technologists have come to nickname me the reducer. What are you waiting for? I'm going to have to call his orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Kippen. you got to be kidding. Hang tight. I'll be right back. There's part of me that hopes that he can get there quickly, so that the patient no longer has to suffer and we can get the procedure done. Another part of me hopes that he's out of town on vacation because he's so darn difficult to deal with. An hour? Okay, thank you. The longer the hip stays out of joint, the harder it is to reduce it back into place. Dr. Kibben's in surgery for at least another hour, and he says he definitely wants to be the one to reduce Trevor's hip. What are you going to do? If the hip is not able to be reduced, quite often the patient has to have a procedure done under general anesthesia, or worse, another surgery. Oh. Dr. Rupp's patient has dislocated his artificial hip, but his orthopedic surgeon is delayed in the operating room. What are you going to do? What did he say? Dr. Kippen says he definitely wants to be the one to reduce Trevor's hip. What? Dr. Kippen is not here. Look at him. Either you do it right now, or I will. I'm trained to do it. So I sympathize with the partner. Okay, okay. I'll do it. The longer we wait to reduce the hip, the more difficult it becomes. And that's because the muscle surrounding the joint spasms so tightly that it's hard to get the hip back into place. Janine, draw up 100 milligrams of propofol, please. Reducing the hip can be incredibly painful, so much so that we end up giving the patient a generous dose of anesthetic essentially knocks them out. Babe, I promise. When you wake up, you'll feel a whole lot better. I can't wait. Go get me some muscle, please. What about me? I'm sorry, Stan. But for this part, you need to step out. No way. I've seen a whole lot worse than this at work. I can handle this. I know you can, but you really need to step out. A hip reduction, or any joint reduction for that matter, can be incredibly barbaric to watch. So in most cases, we ask the loved ones to step outside. Take good care of him. I will. First, I confirm that the patient has been fully sedated. Forever. Forever. Okay. Ready? And now that I've got a little extra muscle on hand, I can go ahead and get the reduction done. Ready? A hip reduction is all about leverage and force. 
Although I had done my fair share of hip reductions in the past, with a dislocation this severe and an artificial joint, I wasn't making any progress. The patient had been completely sedated, but the pain of trying to get the hip reduced was so intense that he started to rouse. And the medication that we used only lasts about five to ten minutes. Dr. Rupp cannot get his patient's hip back in its socket. The patient had been completely sedated, but the pain was so intense that he started to rouse. The problem I'm facing is I can't keep giving him dose after dose after dose of sedative medication. Too much sedation medication, it could kill him. Should I go get more help? What the hell do you think you're doing? Lo and behold, in walks the patient's orthopedic surgeon, and he is none too happy to see me at the foot of the bed trying to reduce his patient's dislocated hip. Get away from my patient. Dr. Kippen. Where are his x-rays? I need to see them right now. I don't need any more drama on this case, so I simply do as he asks. Posterior dislocation. Sedation. Propofol, 100 milligrams. Hmm. His whole demeanor is from a different era. Gruff, do what I tell you. I'll show you how to produce a hip doctor. So the orthopedic surgeon climbs up on top of the bed. He straddles the patient's legs. He takes the patient's leg in his arm, and he's going to attempt to reduce the hip on his own. Everything about this guy was stone age. Do you want me to stabilize you? Nonsense. I've been doing hip reductions like this since I was in med school. Back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Grab a mat and put it on the floor, please. Suit yourself. Hold his waist. He's got the patient's leg in his arm. And he's using traction and manipulation to try to wrestle that hip back into joint. At this point, I don't care that he stepped into takeover. I just want the hip back in and everything to be done. <laughs> never seen anything like it it was like a scene from an old western where the gunfighter gets shot down off the balcony of the saloon and lands on the ground dr kippen dr kippen he is out cold oh my god i'll show you how to produce a hip doctor everything about this guy was stone age in the midst of doing a hip reduction, Dr. Rupp has been pushed aside by an orthopedic surgeon who has just shown everyone how it's done. <laughs> or not. I cannot believe what I just saw. Dr. Kippen. Dr. Kippen. Oh, my God. There's a reason why this method of hip reduction is no longer recommended, and that's because of the risk of injury to the provider. Although, I've never seen anyone knock himself unconscious. Go get a stretcher, a C-collar, and a bat for it. And some help. The hip is back in, but now I've got an even bigger problem. He might have a skull fracture, or worse, he could have an intracranial hemorrhage, which could be fatal. Ginny, go check on him, please. Vitals are stable. Call orthopedics and tell them what's happened down here. Because this guy is a senior orthopedic surgeon, within minutes... I'm surrounded by hospital bigwigs. Both the chairman of the orthopedics department and the hospital CEO have shown up to see if he's all right and probably to make sure he doesn't sue. On my count, one, two, three. We get his C-spine stabilized, we get him onto a backboard, and then we move him to a stretcher and we take him over to the trauma area. Janine, get him hooked up to the monitor, please. Dr. Rupp in the emergency department. I call radiology to get a stat CT of his head and his C-spine. We don't have an hour. Our patient is Dr. Kippen, and he suffered a head trauma. Sure, he's a VIP. That gets their attention. But he could have a fatal brain bleed, and that gets him to the front of the line, no matter who he is. What? The CT scanner's down. And they say it'll be at least an hour for repairs. We don't have that time to wait. Cardiac monitor, please. Dr. Rupp's patient, a fellow doctor at the hospital, needs an emergency CT scan. What? 
but the scanner is being repaired. The orthopedic surgeon is no spring chicken, and he can have multiple injuries to his head and to his cervical spine. I need to get him a CT scan so I can determine his condition. You need to go to radiology right now and get that CT scanner fixed stat. He could be dying right here in front of us. I don't think hounding the repair guy is going to get the CT scan magically fixed. But I do have another idea. Let me call the outpatient department, see if we can use their scanner. Outpatient radiology is clear across the hospital. And its CT scanner is not one that the emergency department is often allowed to use. But it's my only shot at getting an immediate assessment of my new patient. At first, outpatient radiology says no because they're already backed up. Our patient is Dr. Kippen. Thank you. And that gets me the answer I need. We start rushing the surgeon toward the outpatient department. Is that Dr. Kippen? Yes. What happened? He had a little accident while he was fixing Trevor's hip, which is back in place, by the way. He should be coming out of sedation soon, and you can go see him. We get the CT done in the outpatient scanner, and of course, the head of radiology is there by that point. No fractures, but he's got a subdural hemorrhage on the left occipital lobe. That might sound bad, but most small bleeds in the brain are reabsorbed and don't require any additional treatment. And we just need to keep him for observation for the next 24 hours. Any change? What the hell is going on? Yep. You fell off the stretcher and knocked yourself out. Tell me you were smart enough to order a C-spine and a CT scan. Treating a fellow physician, even in the best of circumstances, can be difficult. But this guy was over the top. You have a small subdural hematoma and a concussion. But from what I can tell, you're going to be just fine. Did I reduce the patient's hip? Yes. See? I told you to leave it to an expert. Good call on the math, though. Although the placement could have used a little work. I guess that's the best I'm going to get. And the next day, both of my patients are released. I don't want to see you back here in surgery. <laughs> Dr. Ruff? Thank you. <laughs> and I'm sorry. It's okay. Just next time, take it easy on the exercise. Very easy. Because next time, I might not be available to fix you, doctor. And then he walks out as if he hadn't just knocked himself out for hours. He's as tough as they come.